So, uh, hi guys, my name is Erin Hayden. I'm a project manager in the Yakima Basin with Strata Limited, and I am here to present the Cold Creek Culvert design again. <laughs> Um, so Cold Creek is located near Snoqualmie Pass. Um, it's a tributary to Ketchless Lake, which is the headwaters of the Yakima River. Um, this culvert uh, in and of itself was actually put in place in the early 1900s as a part of the Milwaukee Great Railroad um, and is currently um, underneath the Cascades Blues Trail, which is owned by Washington State Parks and Recreation um, with four service lands on Either side of <laughs> the, either side of the uh, uh, trail. Um, the culvert itself is a complete passage barrier for fish. Um, the original culvert design, when it was placed into uh, the railroad grade in the early 1900s, actually had about 10 feet of fill brought in uh, to make it up to the railroad grade. So there is. A significant water surface drop on the exterior or on the exit part of the culvert. It's not the dongles, right? I think you just need to move your mouse. Oh, my mouse off there. of the screen. And so from here on out, you should okay. be able to click it. So this is actually a picture from August of last year. You can actually see the extreme water surface drop on the outlet of the culvert and the undermining of the culvert that is occurring from uh, years of high water flows and also after uh, a prior project by the Bureau of Reclamation that did a fishway up to the culvert and was immediately washed out shortly after completion of that construction. Um, so what we're planning or what we're proposing to do is to do a uh, design. We're only proposing to go to a preliminary design. We do recognize that it's going to have a significant cost to replace the culvert with whatever structure we come up with um, based off of an alternatives assessment. But we do plan to do um, conceptual and preliminary design for this project. Erin, just for... Uh... Reference so so when the reservoir is full, where does that where does that come to? I mean, is it up on the concrete or is it never up there? It's never up there. Okay. So it is it is a complete uh, upstream passage barrier around, likely a uh, downstream passage barrier. Okay. Thanks. Um, there is some, and you can see there is some water flowing. And like I said, this is the August of last year. Um, this. They did note that when during uh, this picture, the reservoir was down at 19% um, capacity. So there is disconnection um, downstream of the culvert when the reservoir is at its lowest, um, but uh, there is connection for the good majority of the year. Um, U.S. Fish and Wildlife actually designated Cold Creek as a critical habitat for bull trout. Um, you can see that it actually is a 4.4 square mile watershed containing about 2.75 miles of usable habitat above the culvert that is completely inaccessible at this point. Um, it has also been uh, estimated by WDFW that Cold Creek contains approximately 11% of the usable bull trout rearing habitat um, within the Ketchless Lake system. So uh, this is actually a picture of the completed fishway project by the Bureau of Reclamation shortly before it was um, blown out with a high flow event. Um, some of the, like I stated earlier, issues um, there's a large amount of fill leading up to this culvert and underneath this culvert. Um, there's a significant water surface drop on the outlet of the culvert. Um, passage is likely, again, not possible upstream, but it's definitely, uh, or sorry, it's not possible upstream, but seasonally possible downstream. Um, there are downstream modifications. Some of the, the material from uh, this Fishway still persists in the downstream section today, and I've got some pictures of that here a little bit later on. Uh, and so the large metal plates, there's some uh, fabric that's still there, and some of the boulders and rocks still persist. Um, 
And there is, un, like I said, unknown uh, seasonal disconnection. Uh, we don't know exactly uh, how often it's disconnected or what points in the season it's disconnected. So that would need to be looked at a little bit further. But I do want to point out that last year, I had looked at doing an assessment for the creek. We are no longer uh, asking for an assessment portion of this creek. We are just looking for assessment of the cul or of the culvert itself so that we can actually um, better uh, guide the design process. Um, and then again, like I said, there's materials downstream that are left from the original project. And that looked like that for two weeks before it blew out. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, oh, and I'll actually go back to that. So uh, the HPA that actually required this to be put into place um, is the statute of limitation has ran out on this. And I do have a letter it's attached to my uh, my project application from DFW saying that the Bureau of Reclamation does not have any um, responsibilities towards fixing this any longer. So it's, it needs to be taken care of by somebody. So that last picture is that inundated with water when the pool is full, or does it does never get that high? It, it does get that high, yes. Um, and actually, I have some pictures even later on from um, earlier in the season when U.S. Fish and Wildlife placed the Ipatigare, um, and you can see the connection. So our current uh, estimated budget is $227,071 total. We do have an estimated $50,000 match from uh, Washington State Parks. That is different from last year. Um, so our total surfboard ask is $177,071. Um, our first main goal is to develop conceptual and preliminary designs for the fish, fish passage and to implement some outreach and planning for that future implementation. We do recognize that implementation of this is going to be a little bit on the expensive side, and that's part of the reason why we're only asking for preliminary designs, recognizing that any permitting that were to be done um, could be outdated if we did it in this current project. So we're gonna phase the project into two different sections. Um, and then main goal is to increase the quantity and the quality of accessible rearing habitat um, and to restore fish passage for bull trout and other resident species in Cold Creek. And I will say this until I am blue in face, that we are providing passage prior to the mandated passage at Catchless Lake. So there will be, if we can get this project completed, there will be possible, there will be usable habitat available for anatomous species prior to um, anatomous species being able to access Catchless Lake. Timeline, we hope to have hire, hired engineers within four months of funding of the project. Um, within nine months of funding, we would like to do conceptual designs and the, and it says habitat assessment, but that assessment is just for the culvert, looking at sediment load and designs. And um, I'll also get into, there is, there is fiber optic cable running above the culvert. Um, and then within 15 months, having those preliminary designs uh, ready to go for uh, review by stakeholders and building groups. Um, so this is some of the materials that persist downstream of the culvert after uh, it was originally blown out. Um, so we would like to identify our uh, biological criteria to help guide our decisions in the culvert replacement. We aren't. We aren't. Um, set on having it be a culvert. We do actually plan to use the designs that are currently existing from Paul Tappel. They were created in 2010. It is a bridge model. Um, so we will use those existing uh, plans and designs as part of our alternatives assessment and one of the possible alternatives for the project. Um, and we plan to develop complete review design sets that are acceptable to all stakeholders. We do recognize that the design will have to go through review by WGFW, Bureau of Reclamation, um, as well as uh, Washington State Parks and their engineers. Uh, this fits with the recovery plan action, the 2023 to 2033 bull trout action plan, um, Upper Yakima action, Cold Creek, Cold Creek Passage, tributary access and juvenile bearing habitats. Um, it's unfortunately not in a whole lot of action for uh, recovery plans, and it used to be a tag focused project and was removed for this year. So um, it's it's limited on its uh, recovery plans. 
Uh, we are planning this project based off of climate change and the fact that this site is predominantly a snowpack dominated site and will likely change into a rain dominated site, which will increase the flows within the creek, which is definitely going to guide our planning and design process. Um, and then some of our project partners, as I said, Wash State Parks and Recreation, they will be assisting in um, engineering and designs and as, as well as uh, some match funding. Uh, WDFW for um, any assessment work and design work, um, as well as habitat identification, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife uh, for technical assistance, same with uh, U.S. Forest Service. We have actually already had many conversations with the Yakima Nation and their support for this project. Um, and then we've actually already talked to the Bureau of Reclamation um, for the old design reports and failure report for their uh, prior project. And this is the uh, a downstream from the culvert uh, look, looking to the lake. Uh, you can see, as I said, some of that material that's left over and how how um, much it was scoured out after that project uh, failure. Um, so there are a few constraints for this project. There's wide fluctuations in flow within that creek, um, mainly because it is a snow dominated creek. Uh, implementation funding is going to be a challenge. We do recognize that it's going to be a large implementation cost. Um, the design process will be a, a process in and of itself, just because it does have to go through different agencies and their engineers and the approval from those different agencies. Um, we will have to provide temporary passage during construction over the creek. Uh, it is a recreational site, the Cascades Blues Trail, and the Washington State Parks and Recreation has mandated that there is temporary passage available over that creek during any construction. <clears throat> um, site access is a constraint as well. It is a one way uh, onto the Cascades to Blues Trail. So you uh, access the site from up at the Catchless Boat Launch, and then you actually have to drive on past the site to get out. Uh, there's not really anywhere to turn around. Um, and then last but not least, there is a large fiber optic cable that is over the top of the culvert and that will have to be planned for and it will be an added cost some time for construction. And lastly, and so this is, as I said, the picture of the pit that was put in by um, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and you can actually see the connection and flowing water uh, earlier in the season, and this was put in in May of last year. Uh, it's not currently on the tennis, unfortunately. Um, and they have had at least one or two bull traps ping moving up to the barrier yes. and cold, right? Yes. Yeah, no yeah. one's really detected where the Yakimation was doing their fish thing. Yeah. I thought we'd call them cloud switch. <laughs> I had a question for you, Aaron. Yeah. Do you have uh, flow data do I mean what am I trying to say do we have a good understanding of quantitatively of the range of flows low flow looked pretty low do we have measurements of high flows or is it just kind of the um, whatever that's called the kind of engineering assumptions that are made for high flows engineering assumptions made for high flows at this point okay there is an older analysis by Jeff Thomas that includes you know, flows through the base flow season, and that also includes temperature data. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, just a comment. Um, thanks for coming back with a proposal that addressed some of the concerns. This is a, you know, this is a different looking proposal, and there were some things that, you know, that were part of the sets of concerns, at least for the some tag members last year. So it's a lot cleaner. So thanks for Changing it that yeah. way. What year did that thing blow out? Yes. Is high flows or yes. yes. And there are a few WDFW folks who point out that they <laughs> recommended in the HPA that their design was underestimating peak flows. <laughs> <laughs> 
The, the other thing just, you know, that got worked through last year during this process is there was this, you know, different stories about whose responsibility it was to fix it. And, you know, the agencies worked through that. So that should be behind us now. But like you said, there's a letter. There was a lot of discussion as well. So, you know, we should be looking at it cleanly as a project without any additional baggage. That's basically been resolved in some of the past. And one other issue last year was lack of clarity on relative value of habitat for different uses and stuff. And one thing that came out of the pre-application discussion with Erin is she's got some time to talk to the full trial work group in May about the project to get more input from them on what types of uses are expected and their sense of its relative value given those assumptions. So there may or may not be consensus there, but we'll do our dangest to bring you back sort of a summary from the bull trout work group of what they're thinking. Yeah, about. that'd be a great thing to have uploaded as an attachment at the right time was, you know, whether it's a paragraph or a page or whatever. Yeah. Questions for her. Where are those bull trout coming from? <clears throat> This is the Gold Crowd, Gold Creek bull trout population. It's part of the problem. They're all basically confined to Gold, oh, oh. Gold Creek right now. So, you know, mm -hmm. all their eggs are in one basket. Just... Okay. Site visit wise, this may be a hard one to get to, as you mentioned. It's one-way access on something that's normally a non-motorized trail. So it's either, it's a very pleasant pipe, but it's one that's hard to fit into site visits, or it's special permissions to get a whole pile of rigs through. So we may not be able to visit in site, in which case uh, we'd like to ask for a virtual presentation and some more. Yes. Uh, well, and there's also the risk of uh, some snow. On the, on the trail too, at least this time. <laughs> if people haven't seen it, it is an impressive sight in person. You don't realize the scale of the, the, the snow, the fill, until you're skiing across the top of it and looking down at the culvert way below you. Um, Elizabeth writes uh, that last year, this project was conditioned by the surfboard technical review panel for review of the conceptual designs. So, that condition would continue this year because the application is substantially the same as that submitted last year. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we, she says, do not need the surfboard tech review to take another look at this application. So it is up to the local review team to determine ranking. Um, and it sounds like the application was updated with additional details. So like the last one, the local team may want to take another look if you were here last year at the application. Sure. Back in silence. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot more questions last year. <laughs> <laughs> That's the advantage of coming back a second time. Yeah. You beat them down. If you're curious about what it looks like, Google Street View actually has imagery yeah. on the, the trail there. So. Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah, somebody was, had a bike camera or a helmet or camera really? on their helmet. And yeah, you can see it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Erin. Yeah, thank you guys.